As we begin now to think about how do we establish our transfer goals, I wanted to start with this article. This is from 2017. If you remember back to the Charlottesville protest and when James Alex Fields drove his car into the protesters at Charlottesville. And this was an article that interviewed one of his former high school teachers, Derek Weimer, who talked about the fact that James held these uh, neo-Nazi views that he tried to, of course, dissuade him from holding these views. And he talked about James being a bright student. He wasn't antagonistic necessarily towards the teacher, but the teacher laments the fact that he wasn't able to really persuade uh, James to think uh, otherwise uh, about his neo-Nazi views. And it just reminds us of everything that we do in social studies, that as important as it is for students to have the right kinds of conceptual understandings in terms of knowledge and skills, that our transfer goals often uh, involve values and dispositions. We also want students to be good citizens who promote the common good. And part of our transfer goals also has to involve meeting the social emotional needs of our students. And all of that goes into establishing transfer goals. Some reminders here from the last session about transfer. In order to transfer learning to a new situation, the learner must be able to make an association between a previously learned situation and the novel situation or the new situation. And the way they do that is they do it through these organizing concepts. In other words, it's important what we do at the surface level in establishing these organizing concepts so that students have these concepts to work with as they go to transfer, transfer this to new situations. So the surface level is very important. Don't get the idea that we, we jump ahead in the learning and that we're always at the highest level of learning in transfer phase. No, it's important to scaffold through, to begin with the organizing concepts at the surface level and to help students consolidate their understanding of those concepts and then to help them draw comparisons between them at the deep level. And then, and only then can they do transfer. Transfer also involves the, the patterns of thought or the operational schema about the relationship among these concepts. Again, at the deep level, this is where this occurs. And then third, and I mentioned this when we looked at the pyramid, the importance of the metacognitive skills. That we help students increasingly be able to monitor their own thinking to detect similarities and differences. And as we move up the pyramid, that students are increasingly able to think about their thinking as they have discussions with the teacher and with other students in the class, that they pause to think about how, how are they learning? How is their own thinking evolving and changing with relationship to these concepts and their, their deeper understanding of these concepts and the similarities and differences? Again, another important distinction that we made in the first session, the difference between deep learning and transfer really depends on the degree of distance or difference among the concepts. So when we have uh, two concepts that are closely related, for example, we're looking at, we looked at in the last session, the idea of empire building as a concept. And if we are comparing uh, the Roman Empire to the Mongol Empire, that might be a deep level connection. But if we're looking at, we're comparing something like the Roman Empire or the Mongol Empire to 20th century imperialism, now we're a little further removed in, uh, in time and in distance 
Or we might even say really to get to the transfer phase would be to look at sort of modern day decolonization and the relationship between empire building in the ancient and the medieval world and the 20th century world and decolonization and what patterns of imperialism are still left in the contemporary world. That would be the ultimate sort of connection that we make to these earlier concepts that's further removed in, in time and in distance. So that helps us to, to distinguish whether we're doing deep level connections between events or whether we're really doing application or transfer. From John Hattie and Julie Stern's book, Visible Learning for Social Studies, a couple of important quotes here about transfer. When we spend time in the transfer phase, students take ownership of their learning because they see the value. And I think the headlines at the beginning help to illustrate what we mean by this. When we're able to take the world as it exists today and all of the things that are happening in the world today, and we're able to bring that to students and say, what is it in our, in our organizing concepts that we've learned so far this year that we're able to apply that understanding to what we see today? Now we see the relevance. We see the value of it. And students begin to take ownership and they begin to increase their independence in making those connections outside of simply the teacher drawing those direct connections for them because they start to see the value in what they're learning. Again, in the transfer phase of learning, we want students to gain more independence in identifying similarities and differences that are temporally or conceptually more removed from one another. As I mentioned, when we think about transfer goals and how do we establish what we want our transfer goals to be, there's a lot to take in. First, we ask, you know, what do we want students to know? What is the content knowledge that they have to have to be able to wrestle with the ideas and the things that are happening in the world today, all of those that are captured in the headlines, for example? And then what are the skills and the reasoning capacities? What do we want students to be able to do? And we talk about, especially in the internet age and really in the social media age, the ability for students to be media savvy and to be able to evaluate online information. This is a skill set that students have to have. And so that factors into our transfer goals. So it's the foundational knowledge, it's the skill sets. And then again, it's the dispositions. What do we want students to value? You know, think about that teacher who was lamenting the fact that his student walked away from school with these neo-Nazi views that he wasn't able to dissuade him from. The reality is, especially in social studies education, is we do want students to walk away with certain civic dispositions. And that's one of the things that makes social studies unique. Social studies is a collection of disciplines. We don't teach history and geography and government and economics. We take all of those disciplines and more and we merge them together in a synergistic way to establish something that is greater, where the sum is greater than the parts. And I would submit to you that one of those pieces that makes the sum greater than the parts is that there's a certain civic dispositions that we want to build in with students that aren't necessarily inherent in the discipline of history or the discipline of geography or the discipline of political science alone. But in social studies, there's an instrumental purpose. Social studies emerges as a discipline 100 years ago with pragmatic goals. It's at the height of the progressive era that it has very explicit goals that we want to solve problems in society. And so it's not just that we want students to have certain kinds of knowledge and certain skill sets. Those are important too in order to solve problems in societies. But we have to have certain things that we value. 
we have to have certain civic dispositions. We have to want to contribute to the common good. And also, I think when we do this, we need to be cognizant of students' social emotional needs. How do we meet the needs of individual students? How do we meet the needs of our students collectively, especially in these times of crisis situations? Because that factors into what we establish as transfer goals as well. Remember, we're, we're educating young people. We're not simply educating widgets. We're educating humans who have their own social emotional needs and their own experiences that they bring to the table. So we want to merge these four together to establish some transfer goals. As we go to our second breakout session, I want you to think about these three questions in light of what I've said about transfer goals. First, how do we approach the information literacy crisis in the social media age. And this is what I just alluded to. We have an information literacy crisis that has been largely created in the internet age. If you've read Sam Weinberg's latest book, Why Study History, when it's already on your phone, uh, he talks about the fact that we really have to build a set of what they call civic online reasoning skills that are different from anything that we taught in the pre-social media age, in the pre-internet age. There, there may be some similarities in the critical thinking skills that we bring to the table. I'll talk about this Barry Beyer quote in just a second. But at the same time, there are some unique needs here in the social media age. How do we approach those? And then again, how do we promote the civic values and dispositions that are necessary to strengthen democracy and civil society? And then third, how do we address the social emotional needs of students in a state of ongoing crisis? And we are in a state of, of ongoing crises right now, of one after another. It seems like over the past year from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic to the summer of Black Lives Matter protests, to the continuation of the pandemic uh, in, in another wave and in continuing uh, virtual learning where students are not able uh, to be with each other in the classroom, to the post 2020 election controversy that culminated in the January 6th insurrection. And we have to think about how all of these come together and how we help students work through their social emotional needs to have stronger information literacy skills, to build civic values and dispositions. This quote from Barry Byer, if you're not familiar with Barry Byer's work, comes from the 1970s, 80s, and into the 90s. Byer was a professor of social studies education, and he talked a lot about thinking skills. But I thought this quote was really important to what we're talking about today. He says, critical thinking in its most refined state is a frame of mind and a set of attitudes and dispositions as well as a number of cognitive operations. And if you think about that, very often we think about critical thinking only through the lens of cognitive operations. We think about, uh, you know, how do we teach deductive and inductive reasoning? How do we come to correct conclusions? But what Byer says is, we have to have the right attitudes and dispositions. We have to believe, for example, that it's necessary to fact check things in order to come to the right conclusions. We have to believe that logic itself is necessary. We have to be open-minded enough to consider different perspectives and to be persuaded by the weight of the evidence. Those are involved in critical thinking as much as simply knowing what the cognitive operations are. And I think that has implications. Again, even though Byers' work is much before the social media age, that Weinberg says we have this unique set of skills, but I think this really does transfer into our present age and speaks to that. On the other hand, the cartoon here is just somewhat humorous. The idea of, are you coming to bed? I can't. Uh, this is important. Uh, what is it? 
well, someone is wrong on the internet, right? Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever felt that way before, but if you engage in any kinds of discussions about social media, sometimes you feel like, but there's people posting incorrect things online or making incorrect comments and I have to correct them. And three hours later, and we're still in these kinds of discussions, which in many cases end up being fruitless and, and, and pointless. And there is a, an extent to which we have to sort of, you know, be strategic about uh, when and how we address misinformation online. I think Weinberg makes this point as well, that it's important to uh, think about what it is uh, necessary to simply ignore out there. Okay, so we're going to go to breakout sessions again, and I'd like you just to discuss uh, these three questions at the top uh, in breakout sessions.